So what was the reason behind the massive Starlink outage and what do you need to know before possibly damaging your Starlink dish? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We went live on Friday, guys, and my wife and I came into the studio right around 8 o'clock. We were going live at 8.30, but lo and behold, Starlink was down. And I haven't seen this in the past because normally if there's like an outage, it's always like five seconds, a half a second, one second. I mean, maximum might be a minute in between satellites if there's something going on. But now a year and a half into this, there really isn't any outages, just little tiny spikes here and there, right? Well, we ended up going down and we were down for a while. And I started scrambling, guys. I went outside, I took a look at the dish, I made sure it was pointing in the right direction. Then I went to the cables to see if there was any cables that were burned out. I even checked the little ethernet dongle because we know those dongles go bad. Well, it was none of that. I had backups for all of that. So if I need a new cable, I had one. If I need a new dongle, I had that. But before I get into all this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. They're 100% free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there is a little thank you button down here that YouTube provided us. Thank you, YouTube. If you click that, you can give a dollar or two, or if not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you enjoy the content, even in the least, consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely awesome. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And then click this little button over here. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink content, I have a lot for you. There's about 130, 140 videos already in a Starlink playlist. I'll put a link over here to that. Go check that out when you're done watching this video. I went over to the app, and this is what the app looked like. When I first opened it up, it said this. It says, calibrating Starlink. Your Starlink just powered on. Network performance should stabilize after about 15 minutes. I'm like, why in the heck is my Starlink powering on? Now, we know that updates almost always happen in the middle of the morning, like 3 a.m. or something. That's usually when they push these updates, and rightfully so. There's not a lot of people on at that time, but seeing... This happening during prime time, let's say at eight o'clock, it was like 8.15 or something. Matter of fact, if we look at this other snapshot that I took where it says network statistics, you can see it went down right around 8.15, 8.16. And then you can see this jagged side over here where it's saying that it's going back up. And that was right around 8.45. So that was a total of 30 minutes down. You can see here minimum milliseconds for your latency of 27, maximum of 10,500. 35. <laughs> Obviously, it was down. So this shows this outage, and I'm like, wow, this is a major, major outage. I've never seen this before, ever. So knowing I promised you that we were going to go live at 8.30, I said, you know, how are we going to do this? Should I try using AT&T? We know AT&T is completely crap. With Uverse, I'm getting like 1.5 meg up. That's going to be impossible to do. So I was remembering, well, we got T-Mobile, right? I did a video about getting T-Mobile home internet just a couple of videos ago. And I was telling you about it and it was working out pretty well, but I've never tested it for something like this. I said, you know what? I told my wife, we're gonna go live with T-Mobile and that's just it and see what ends up happening. So what I did is I've been testing out for the last two weeks, a bonding system, let's call it, that allows you to take multiple connections and bond them together into one connection that allows you to not only do load balancing, but failover, but even one better. It goes down to like packet level instead of just session level. I'll get into that in another video, but I ended up using it as a test. And sure enough, I set it up so that T-Mobile was the primary and Starlink was the secondary. So in my mind, I was thinking to myself, if Starlink came back up online, they would now bond together and we would be able to continue with no problem, no matter if T-Mobile had a problem or not. 
And you know what, guys? That is exactly what happened. After a while that we were online, I was looking at the statistics, and sure damn enough, Starlink was back online, and we had T-Mobile running, and they were going back and forth with each other, no problem. Redundant feeds being sent over to YouTube. And we had almost no dropouts. And if there was a dropout, it's like a second here, a second there, or something during all of this chaos. So this was an actual real world test, not like just going over to a router and pulling the plug. Okay. It was an actual real world test and it passed. So I'm going to tell you about this probably within the next week. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more testing with it, but just hang in there for that. The bottom line here is we were able to go live and we did it with T-Mobile to begin with. And then we did it both with T-Mobile and Starlink. One Starlink came back online. Now, while we went online, there was a a ton of people saying, are you out? What's going on? We're out here. We're out there. And I was looking in the chat window. I'm like, oh my God, look at all these people. There is a ton. Arizona, Florida, California, Seattle, Washington, Texas, San Diego, Alabama, Wisconsin, Nebraska, on and on and on. All of these people, even in other countries, we saw people from Mexico, Canada, Australia, London, Nigeria, guys, Nigeria, all down. I'm like, something really crazy is going on here. So I was asking everyone to just send in any information that they get. And some people were sending in tweets that came out from Elon. And I actually took a copy of them so you can see them. The first tweet came out and said, sorry, slight glitch with SpaceX Starlink coming back online now. And then he also said after that was caused by expired ground station cert. We're scrubbing the system for other single point vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities. So when you hear that vulnerabilities, like were they hacked or something like that? No. What they're saying is they ended up having a certificate for their ground stations that ended up coming due and it went expired. And once it was expired, that's it. It's dead. So they were scrambling to go and maybe pay the bill or turn it back online or get another cert or whatever they had to do over there at SpaceX. But that's what they ended up doing. Now, what Elon was saying is we were scrubbing the system for other single point vulnerabilities like this, meaning that if you don't pay the cert or if you don't have someone managing these certs, and they go down, the whole damn thing goes down. And that is exactly what happens. Now, if you don't know, these certs are like everywhere. They're not just with a ground station or whatever. We deal with certs all the time, right? So if you go to a website and the website is not HTTP, it's HTTPS. That's an SSL. That is a secure link, let's call it, certificate. And if you don't pay that certificate every year, your website is no longer secure. And then Google frowns on it, you probably won't get any traffic. <laughs> So pay your damn cert. But the bottom line here is these things expire and you have to be always aware of it. And I was reading on a Reddit, someone was saying like, I don't understand this happens with SpaceX Starlink. This is a major ISP. They need to have some type of certificate management team there that keeps track and renews and knows which ones are expiring and when they're expiring. And I think that's very, very important. I'm surprised that they don't do it. And that's probably why Elon said, you know what, we're going to look at other single point vulnerabilities at this point to figure out if there's other points that we need to really address like this one. And obviously, this is one that they need to address. So this guy actually put in the Reddit two different scripts. One script is specifically for Bash, and another script is a PowerShell script. I'm going to show him on the screen. I'm like, wow. He's like, this is all that you need to be able to find out if a certificate, any certificate, is expiring in the next 30 days. Just use it. <laughs> I'm like, man, some of these programmers are like, here you go. They answer your question really quickly. So I think that was quite amazing. So now, obviously, there's an other issue here that I want to address. And this is kind of the basis of this video to begin with. And that is during this live chat, I was getting a lot of feedback from you saying that, hey, the system went down. It was down for a half an hour. It updated itself. And once it was updated, it rebooted. But now once it rebooted, the app is saying that the heater is on. It's getting hot. And I'm like, well, I guess that's not a problem if it is located in a cold environment. And the answer to that was, no, Joe, I'm in Florida and the heater is on. 
I'm like, oh God, that is not a good thing. I mean, we know here in Florida, it's like 80, 90 degrees, sometimes 100. It's hot and the humidity is crazy. You don't want the heater on. Now, there's not actually a heater inside the unit, all right? What this does is to heat the dish or Mr. Bevel, how it works is it sends a greater amount of amperage, more watts, let's say, to it. And that ends up heating it up, all right? We don't want that in Florida. Okay, so what I have to say is this, and I told them on the live is do this, go into your app. So what I'm going to tell you is the exact same thing that I told them on Friday night. Go into your app on your phone. And once you're in your app, go down to the bottom to where it says settings and you can see Wi-Fi configuration. And then underneath that, it'll say snow melt. Now you have to be logged in to be able to make this modification. So if you're not logged in, log in and then change this setting from auto or from preheat. Change that to off. Unless it's snowing outside, turn it to off because there could be some type of glitch in the update that's causing this. And you don't want to go and burn your dish out because the heater is on and it's 90 degrees out. Okay. So that's my PSA or public service announcement recommendation to you. I hope you find it helpful. Anyways, guys, if you found this video interesting in the least or even helpful, consider throwing it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click this little button over here. If you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down there. You can click on that contribute a dollar or two, or even better, don't, and just become a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you're looking for more Starlink content, I have a Starlink playlist. Maybe I'll put a link over here. Go check that out. There's over 130 videos there for you to take a look at. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what to buy, what not to buy, all this kind of stuff, all for you. Go check out that Starlink playlist and head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.